Hello there friends and welcome. Uh, today I'd like to show you some uh, techniques and my working with pigments. Now before we start, and this is the very first time that I've, uh, I've done a, a tutorial that uses pigments, so I would like to make mention of some health and uh, safety aspects. One of the very things that is on the, uh, on the marketing statement is that they're very finely ground, is actually one of the things that causes a health concern because uh, being very fine type of dust it can uh, remain airborne, and if we inhale it, our body can accumulate it. So that's a, uh, that's a bit of a health and safety concern. One of the easiest ways to protect ourselves is to wear a dust mask, a very simple one like this. I got it from my local hardware store, 3M 8210. If you're not sure how big it is, here's a Humbrol Bat 33 for scale. One more thing before we kick off, I'd like to have a semi-rant about uh, product design because this bottle these bottles are really, really good, and these bottles are terrible. I think, yet, yet, the, the colors from these guys are really cool and have funky names, and the colors from these guys, although quite similar, are a little bit more difficult to figure out. If only we could put these together and somehow make a better hybrid. Oh well. This one's a flip top, and you lose quite a bit each time you pop it open. These ones are one of the childproof cushion and spin open ones, and they're just so easy to work with. Tools needed today. Oh, I'm gonna to use a small selection of brushes. I may grab others as I'm working. Uh, that's one of the benefits of doing artistic stuff like this. We can work on the fly. They're synthetics, they're reasonably stiff, and they're not in primo condition. Uh, I like flat brushes like this because the bristles, you can see, they tend to be a little shorter. And they have a little bit more oof when we're pushing it in because we need that to get them into the surface. And long brushes, uh, round brushes like this, uh, for gentle placement and uh, streaking effects. One of the other ones I may use uh, for some of the burnt effects will be these little uh, makeup brushes, sponges, that uh, I got from my local Dysol. Okay, now my plan here is to augment uh, this detail and uh, I'm going to be working up through uh, lighter colors getting progressively darker. So uh, this one is a slightly uh, yellowish effect. So you can see that uh, with some of the other effects I've been using on this, it has a slight yellowish tone because that looks really good with the blue green. Next, I'm going to increase how much uh, yellow is involved there with a little bit of this ochre color. I just chose these by eye. It's, uh, there's not particularly a roadmap here for you to choose your colors. Uh, you can choose them based on, on how you want it to look. It's just an artistic thing. And then finally, a quite a dark one here. And I just love the name of this one. Get it in shot, Burned Grease. I'm hoping it looks slightly brownish as well, that it might work well with the Tamiya flat brown that I've got airbrushed in there. It should look pretty nifty. I'm going to work with what's inside the cap here. Uh, we can put them out into a separate uh, container, etc. But uh, why? I, I think it looks good in photos for putting in books, so I may do that. But uh, for actual working, no, just what's, what's sticking to the lid, that's good for me. And gently place it into position. It's quite a mechanical process. Uh, and one of the things that I need to mention to you is, you can see that there are already some effects in there. Now the reason I did that, and that was simply by airbrushing in the smoke effects, uh, it was flat black and uh, flat brown. Uh, I used uh, AK flat black and Tamiya flat brown. Uh, they're quite interchangeable. We need the flat surface to give the pigment something to mechanically grip onto. It's like, um, you know when we talk about uh, prime, putting primer on plastic to give it some tooth to stick to? Works just like that. So we place it on like this. Some of it will be chunky, that's fine. Uh, we don't really mind that. You can work them in like this, so that you maybe waste uh, a little bit less. But what I find is uh, pigments, one of the things you might need to get over is it will feel slightly wasteful. The amount that actually stick to your model is reasonably low. Uh, that's something that surprised me. If you just know that going in ahead of time, you'll be ahead of, uh, of where I was with first using them. Then I'm going to produce the streak by working them with the same brush down this way. There we go. 
Like with many processes, it's like a cleanup job afterwards. That's looking, it's looking pretty good. And then, then it's fine tuning and cleaning up around the outside. And look at that, that's really starting to look very dusty. Now, as I mentioned before, there are, there are a few issues with working with these. This is one of the reasons to work with them is because of that cool effect. Now I'm going to dump some of this onto my working paper. You can blow it off or uh, use a, a blower, like uh, something for cleaning a keyboard or a camera, for example. But uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to keep going all in shot like this. And wait for it, the ultimate cleanup tool. Here's my cleanup tool, ready to go. I'm gonna use my, my finger along the outside here to more define and strengthen that line, like that. And there we have it, a dusty, dusty ingrain line like that. Now, it's not big. Uh, I don't want this to be like a large gimmick sort of thing on the model. This is enough here to sell that effect of accumulated dust. Cool, I like that a lot. Next, same again with a little bit less. Some ochre in here to add some variation, make it a little bit more interesting. I'm gonna brush some off there, there we go. Brush, that's a cool color. Now this color, I'm liking this one a lot. I'm going to augment some of my work up here. But removing some, there we go, and placing it in here as well. Which I like that so much. I'm gonna add a little more. And we can test out something here as well. It'll be cool. It'll be fun, they said. Now the next question I know you're burning to ask me is, aren't you going to fix them? Aren't you gonna use one of these pigment fixes to affix your pigments to the surface? So yes and no, but uh, I knew I would need to show you this as well. For these effects up here, no, we're good. The flat surface and the, the preparation and the flat surface, uh, spraying the airbrush colors there, that affixes them dry uh, through friction and we want that because whenever you apply one of these products, what happens is it will darken them. It's just uh, by nature, they're a, they're a very weak varnish. So when you apply that over the top of pigments or uh, any kind of thinner water, uh, acrylic based thinners like uh, alcohol or um, enamel based thinners, they will darken the effects. Sometimes we don't want that. So these ones will be uh, finished neat. These ones though, I will apply some fixer for you. Very, very simply, I'll put a clean brush into the fixer and then let it flow. I don't actually touch on to the pigments themselves. I place it adjacent to them. Uh, we can airbrush it on as well, but I don't like messing with dust. Uh, and there we go. Sometimes you can't get it to go all the way across by placing it adjacent. So we'll drop it in over the top and let it go across the surface. Now again, being a matte surface here helps with the spreading. If it was gloss, it may not spread across the surface so well. There we go. Now we've got to judge it too. Between, we don't want it to pull and we don't want it to run. So just enough. That should be okay. There we go. Yep. I'm liking that a lot. I may put a little on this, this vent here. Just because there's a, if you, if you spot some, not offending, but you know, some, some runaway trying to get back to the bottle. They've missed their friends, they're trying to get back. Uh, we can use the fixer over the top of that to, uh, to help blend them into the surface as well. Very, very happy how this has turned out. Now I'll have some high-res photos for you in the corresponding blog post. 
that is on my website, paintonplastic.com, to help you for reference. Uh, the photos there, I can put them up in much higher resolution for you, so you can get in there and see the details and uh, give you kind of a target to aim for. And I'll also have the products used listed just for your reference. I know how hard it is to jot down whilst you're watching uh, tutorial videos. Please like and subscribe to the channel. That helps other people, helps me with the algorithm and helps other people to enjoy my content and help them as well. And please let me shout out a big thank you, warm, wonderful thank you to the awesome people who support me on the Patreon platform to make all of this content possible. Super appreciate you guys. Thanks very much, guys. More soon. See ya.